In this video, I want to show you how to place pictures on tracks in Reaper. So I have a project in front of me here with a vocal, some drums, bass, keyboards, and some guitars. Let's hear it. Where the last people stand in. Still dancing when the lights come on The music is fading But this is our favorite part I used to feel like an outcast I think I'm alright after all Cause you make me feel like I belong And to make it easier to see what's on each track We could use pictures on tracks to do that but just to review, we could also use track icons to do the same thing. So for our bass track, if we wanted to see a bit more clearly with a picture what's on this track, we could right click it, go down here to track icon, set track icon, then scroll through all the icons included in Reaper. Let's type in B. And we can see right here, there's a bass clef icon we could use. If we double click it, now that bass clef icon shows up right here, letting us know that this track is bass, along with the name of our track. Just makes it clearer to see it with a picture. But the one downside to using track icons is it takes up this space in the arrange window using the real estate on our monitor. So another option is placing pictures right on the track, like this. Let's say with my vocal, I used a U47 microphone, and I want to remember that later on in the production. If I want to re-record the vocal, it's a good idea to know what mic we used. So what you could do is go right over here and place a picture of that mic. Now on my hard drive, I have some pictures I already saved. And we can just drag and drop them to our tracks, but I prefer to do it a different way. Let's go back to Reaper. And go over here on the vocal track and just select an area. Right over here, make sure we choose the vocal track first. Then we'll go up here to the actions menu and choose show action list. Then we'll type into the filter empty item. And there's an action right here to insert an empty item onto our track. Let's double click it. And it puts this item, this empty item, right on the track which we could add text or even pictures to. So we double click it, it opens up this dialog. If we wanna put text, we could just type it in right here and then choose over here to stretch the image or text, hit okay. And now it shows up right here. And if we stretch it, make it bigger, we'll see the text is bigger. But instead of using text, we could also use a picture. Double click it, let's delete the text, and let's load a picture into this item. I'll go back to that folder I saved from before, and let's choose this U47 picture I saved. Double click it, and it shows up right here. We have a few options to choose from. We could not display it, we could center it, we could display it full height, or stretch it based on the size of the item. I don't prefer this option as it makes the item look weird sometimes, depending on how big we stretch it. So I prefer to choose the option full height image. Hit OK. Now the image looks like this. Make it the size we need. Now we can see the mic we used on this vocal track, reminding us it's a vocal on this track. And of course, the mic we used to record the vocal. And we could do this for each track in our project. Like for our drums, I mostly recorded a kick drum. Let's hear it. Where the last people stand in, still and I want to remember which mic I used and where I positioned that mic. So I took a picture of it and now we could insert it right over here. Let's start by duplicating this item Select it, control on the PC, command on the Mac, drag it down here, then we can double click it and just load a different picture. 
I'm going to choose this kick mic, which looks like this. So I can see what mic I used and where I placed it with the kick. Again, we use full height image. Now it shows up right here. We can stretch it to the size and place it right here. So we can always see that this track is a kick drum that we mic'd up with this mic placed right over here. Let's do the same thing with our bass. I recorded my Fender P bass. Let's duplicate this. I'm going to put it over here because the bass doesn't come in to the verse. So I have some space I could use. Double click it, load a different picture. I'll choose my P bass, which looks like this. And again, we can stretch the size based on how big we want it to be. And by placing it right before it comes in, we'll see it even if we scrolled over here. Go back over here and notice I started my song a bit later, giving me some room to put pictures over here. But in this situation, the bass doesn't come in to the verse, giving me the space to put the picture of my P bass over here. And we could also use this to tell us what we think about the performance of our parts. Like this keyboard right here, I'm really happy with it, and it's a keeper part we're going to use in the final mix. So I'm going to duplicate the bass, put it down here, double click it, load a different picture, and I saved a picture called Keeper, which looks like this. So now let's trim it out and place it right here. And now I know that this keyboard part is a keeper I want to use in the final production. So if I'm jumping around, I can quickly see that this part is a keeper. And also, if we go over here, there's a space in the vocal where the singer doesn't sing. I can just copy this mic and paste it over here as an extra reminder of what mic we used for this vocal track. But of course, you could put something different over here if you prefer. And these tracks over here, these guitars, I'm not happy with their performance, so I want to re record both tracks. And to remember that, we can use a picture on the track as a reminder. So let's duplicate this one, put it here, double click it, and load a different picture. And I save one right here called re record. Double click it, hit OK. And this one looks like this. We'll duplicate it to this track. And now we can see very quickly that I'm not happy with these guitar parts. And we want to re record them later. In fact, there's an extra space over here. Let's select these and duplicate them over to here. So now we can quickly see we want to re record these parts and these parts in the production. So you can see these pictures can be really helpful to decide what's on the track, how we recorded the track, or if our tracks are keepers or anything we want to re record or replace. And we could also do this for song parts. If we look up here, I have an intro, a verse, pre chorus. We can use pictures to make that clearer what part we're looking at in our song. So let's create a new track. We'll put it at the top. Then we can create a time selection up here. Or even better, let's select the track and double click in the ruler up here. And that creates a time selection in between our two markers. So now we can go back to the action list, go to insert empty item, double click it, and that inserts an empty item right in this track in between the intro and the verse, representing our intro. So now we can double click this one, go to load, and I already saved some song parts in here. Go to the intro which looks like this, and we'll choose full height image, hit OK, and it puts it right there. Let's duplicate it for each section. And now we can change this to a verse by double clicking it, go to load, choose verse, hit OK. Now this one is a verse. Change this to our pre-chorus, 
and this one to our chorus. And then we can fly them around the rest of the song, but always see what part we're working on. As we dedicated a track up here, so we can quickly see which song part we're working on. And of course, what mic, what drum, what drum mic and positioning, what instrument, in this case, bass, and if a part is a keeper, well, we're going to re-record it later. And we can put these in any part of our song, making it easier to see as we scroll through our project. So that's pretty much it. That's placing pictures on tracks in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.